As we said, Khitamu Hamisk, we're going to introduce the youngest of our all Memago members. I think she probably is the youngest. Reem Abu Sha'ra is one of uh, our Lebanese graduate who is currently training in France. And she's going to talk to us about the Lebanese experience with vulvar cancer. So uh, the floor is yours, Reem. So I would like to thank the organizing committee of the meeting and especially Dr. David Attala for giving me the opportunity to be here today. And I will present the primary results of our multi-institutional study about the vulvar cancer patients in the MENA region. So according to SEER database, vulvar cancer is considered as a rare gynecologic malignancy and accounts for 4% of all genital tract cancers. And 90% uh, of vulvar cancers, as we know, are squamous cell carcinoma. But we have other rare histologic subtypes, including basal cell carcinoma, varicose carcinoma, Bartholin's gland, adenocarcinoma, paget disease, and vulvar melanoma. And as we know, the precursor lesion of squamous cell carcinoma is the VIN, whether it is usual VIN or differentiated VIN. And according to previous studies, we know that patients who have P16 positive and P53 negative have better prognosis. If you want to talk about the mainstay treatment in early stage vulvar cancer, we know that surgery is the mainstay treatment with or without adjuvant radiation. And uh, for tumors localized medially, less than two centimeters from the midline, it's recommended to evaluate the bilateral anginofemoral lymph nodes. According to Groins and GOG173, sentinel lymph node biopsy, the gold standard in the treatment of patients with early stage vulvar squamous cell carcinoma, and unifocal tumors up to four centimeters in size, and with, in the patients who, had, who have unsuspected anguinal lymph nodes clinically and on imaging studies. According to Groins 2, uh, patients who had micrometastasis in sentinel lymph node evaluations less than 2 millimeters, radiotherapy is safe in terms of groin recurrence rate, resulting in less treatment-related morbidity. And if we have macrometastasis more than 2 centimeters, patients sh should undergo systematic lymphadenectomy, anguinofemoral lymphadenectomy. Concerning the recurrence rate, it depends on tumor size, lymph node involvement, and margins. And it's around 37% at five years. I will start by our study. It's a retrospective observational study, including all patients diagnosed with vulvar cancer at our institution at Hotel Dieu de France Hospital for the past 20 years. It aims to determine demographic, clinical, pathological, and therapeutic modalities in patients with vulvar cancer, the rate of recurrence, survival, and factors affecting recurrence and survival rates, and we included all patients more than 18 years old diagnosed with vulvar cancer treated at our institution from 2002 to 2022. And we excluded all patients operated at another institution. Data was collected from patients' charts after approval of IRB at our institution. And we used the KITU analysis uh, for uh, univariate analysis. If we look at the baseline characteristics of the Lebanese cohort, the median age at diagnosis was 65 years old, and most of the patients, around 94%, had ECOG score 0 to 1. And 86% of our patients were postmenopausal. Concerning the VIN and Lican sclerosis and a history of HPV, we had 12% of our patients have combined VIN, and 12% have a history of Lican sclerosis and 5% had a documented HPV infection. If we want to talk about the tumor localization, 52% of the patients had medially localized tumor, including the clitoris, and 48% were paramedially localized in the right or on the left. Concerning the staging of the disease, 65% of our patients were diagnosed as stage 1 and 2. And in terms of pathology, the squamous cell carcinoma were the most common subtype. It accounts for 88% of the patients. 96% of our patients had surgery as upfront treatment, and 90% of them were 
complete surgery. And we had the data collection concerning the adjuvant radiation on 103 patients. 40% of our patients received adjuvant radiation. When we talk about the outcomes, the median tumor size was 2.3 centimeters, and 35% of our patients had positive lymph nodes, and 34% have associated UVIN or DVIN. Concerning the immunohistochemical studies, 91% have evaluated for P16, and 83, 83 patients were evaluated for P53. And we had 24% of our patients were P16 positive, and 42% were P53 positive. And if you look our, at the survival at two years, we had a data collection for 82 patients, where we have 74 patients from those patients were alive. It accounts around 90% of the patients were alive at two years. This is our curve of overall survival. You can see that we had 90% survival rate at two years and at around 85% at five years. And the median overall survival was not yet reached. I want to talk rapidly about uh, the other uh, institutions. We had our institution, 125 patients from Lebanon. The median age was 65 years. We have also 184 patients from the Department of Salah Aziz Institute in Tunisia from 1994 to 2020, and the median age was 66 years. And we had also 90 patients from four referral centers in Turkey from 2010 to 2020, and the median age was 66 years. When we compared the baseline characteristics between Tunisia, Turkey, and Lebanon, we found that there was a difference in terms of pathological type of the tumor, also in the margins during surgery, when we had 97% negative margins in our cohort versus 75% in Tunisia. And concerning the adjuvant radiation, we have a significant difference. 67% of the patients re received adjuvant radiation in Turkey, 40% in Lebanon, and 50% in Tunisia. Concerning the surgical outcomes, if we, if we look at the post-operative complications, we can see that the, the, the rate of infection and the vulvar dehiscence and inguinal dehiscence were the highest in the Turkey cohort study. And, by the, and after that, we ha they had the post-operative length of stay the highest between the three cohort studies. And uh, however, we, if we look at the bleeding post-operative complications and the necrosis complications, it was the higher in our cohort in Lebanon. It accounts for 9% of the patients for the bleeding and 16% for the necrosis. So multi-institutional data on characteristics and outcomes of vulvar cancer in the MENA region are lacking in the literature. The median age at diagnosis was 65 to 66 years, consistent with previous studies showing that median age of 68 years. The predominant histology is squamous cell, for, squamous cell carcinoma, consisting with previous studies. And majority of patients in the three cohort studies had stage one and two uh, diagnosis. And according to SEER database, around 60% of vulvar cancer cases are diagnosed in stage one and two. And the percentage of positive lymph nodes in all three cohorts was, was from 35 to 39%, which was, was confirmed in EgoCare study uh, that included uh, 1,249 vulvar cancer patients, and the rate of positive lymph nodes was 35.8%. If you want to talk about the, the recurrence rate in Lebanon was 10%. Previous data from 2005 showed overall recurrence rate of 37% at five years in patients who underwent lymphadenectomy. And Groin's one showed overall recurrence rate of 27% at five years in early stage vulvar cancer who had sentinel lymph node evaluation. And the survival, survival data in Lebanon showed 85% survival rate at five years. And recent um, uh, American Cancer Society data showed 86% survival rate at five years in localized stage and 71% in all seer stages combined. 
So, in conclusion, vulvar cancer is a rare disease. Early diagnosis is essential to limit the extension of surgery and the growing dissection. And in this pioneer article, we showed that in MENA region, the patient characteristics, surgical management, and outcomes were optimal and very close to developed countries. And future studies for sure are needed to evaluate the rate of recurrence and survivals in patients with vulvar cancer in the MENA region. Thank you.